Hello everyone, my name is Kavita Gupta. We are talking from Nest Summit on the backdrop of Climate Summit 2020. I'm very excited today. We have Odur Sigurdsson with us, who is the geologist at the Icelandic Meteorological Office, who actually pronounced a very famous glacier, Steth, in 2014. The name, only he can tell you because there's no way I would be able to pronounce it correctly. Uh, Odur, thank you so much for taking time out today. How are you doing? I'm just fine, thank you very much. Uh, where are you connecting us with today? Uh, beg your pardon? Where well, are you connecting us from? Are you in Iceland right I, now? I am in Iceland in the capital, uh, in the office of the Icelandic Meteorological Office in the capital Reykjavik. Oh, wow. Um, so, Otto, this is a very interesting story. When I first came across it, I was like, oh, there is actually a plague. There was a death which was pronounced to uh, a whole glacier, a really big glacier because of climate change. Um, can you please tell us more about it? Well, it was a, a, a beautiful glacier, a cupola formed glacier, which was of the size of about 15 square kilometers at the turn of the 20th century. It has been uh, diminishing more or less ever since. And uh, finally, in the beginning of the tw 21st century, it had lost its status as a, a glacier. It did not move anymore. It was dead ice. So I went up there to check on the, uh, on the situation and declared it dead in the year 2014. Wow. So uh, why that particular glacier or glaciers around it were also having, are also having the similar issue? Now, uh, other glaciers are also disappearing, but this one was the, by far the largest of the glaciers that had disappeared. And it was well known to almost all school kids in Iceland. Wow. So is it, uh, I read somewhere that this was the glacier which was seen uh, from all the roads and all the areas of Reykjavik. So it was very well known by the community. It was very well known because it was easily seen from uh, large inhabited districts and it had uh, this peculiar name of Ork Jökull which made it quite popular with kids. Easy to remember and uh, a beautiful spot. Wow, a very difficult to pronounce for me though. <laughs> um, so there was one thing which really got my attention, the dedication which was written by Icelandic author Andri Snare. Um, he also at the end of it said he gave the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air which was 415 parts per million. Why did you mention the carbon dioxide uh, for that? Because this is the main uh, uh, item that causes the uh, global warming. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, in the uh, Square atmosphere is uh, uh, contributing to a layer that does not uh, admit or let uh, radiation out, so it keeps bouncing back between the layer of uh, of the CO2 and the ground, and warms up the atmosphere in the lowest uh, levels. So we all have been facing climate changes impact. Like I am from California. We had completely pink sky yesterday in San Francisco. Uh, the whole California is burning. With respect to Iceland and the whole uh, Nordic region or around there, when do you think you first started seeing really big impression of climate change firsthand? And how quickly is it, it has been evolving? Yes. Uh, the climate uh, warmed considerably during the third decade of the 20th century and kept warming, uh, kept quite warm uh, for about a half a century. Then it was, uh, had a, we had a cool period again of about 25 years and then really it struck warming uh, in the last decade of the 20th century and the first two decades of the 21st century. 
and it really uh, caused the glaciers to diminish almost every year during that time. Only one year has been rendered the glaciers positive uh, during the last 25 years. What is the global impact if all these glaciers are going to melt and become part of sea? Well, if all the glaciers melt in Iceland, they will raise the sea level by one centimeter. That is very low. But on the other hand, the Icelandic glaciers are very, very uh, uh, good indication what is happening to the glaciers worldwide. So they are very accessible and easily visible and we can easily check the changes, or the oscillations of the glaciers here in Iceland. So this is like the canary bird in the, uh, in the coal mine. It is telling us what is happening elsewhere in the world if we cannot uh, work it out there. Yeah, I think the COP21 was all about that we have to reduce uh, the global warming. Uh, it started with two degrees, came down to it has to be even like one degree cap. Um, if the same speed of melting continues across the world, which it's going now, how many years are left for lots of islands to go down and what's the long and short term effect of it? I think they have already started to uh, uh, inundate islands in uh, low-lying islands in the Pacific. So people have been evacuated from there already, I think. Mm -hmm. And they will, it will continue with uh, 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 advancing speed uh, during this century. And uh, it will continue for centuries, of course. But the glaciers in Iceland are likely to disappear more or less in two centuries. And then we have uh, no ice on Iceland. Wow. Wow. That is such an unimaginable scenario when you think of today and think of Iceland. Uh, that's like changing the whole flora and fauna of any geography, which of course will have different types of impact going forwards, right? The type yes. of food which is going to be available. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, the glaciers are, of course, beautiful thing to watch in the scenery. Uh, and it is an extremely interesting phenomena, a natural phenomena. And also it contains history, which has been gathering up during the last thousand years. And if the glacier disappears in 200 years, the history is gone also. So we need to extract the history from the glacier before it disappears. That takes a lot of money. I need about a million dollars or even two million dollars to even get going on that project. And I have a hard time to um, uh, amass this amount of money. Well, so if it continues to happen, we need millions of dollars to make sure that we extract the history. And you're talking about the history of fossil fuel, like uh, not fuels, but like the archaeological history, basically, right? Our species and everything which has been trapped. Um, and this is just for Iceland. And I'm guessing this is the similar story across the world. Yes. Well, of course, uh, the Icelandic history is contained in the Icelandic glaciers. Uh, some of it may be contained in the Greenland ice sheet, but not, to, not nearly as uh, detailed. So this history that is going with the glaciers is the history of the Icelandic climate and the Icelandic volcanic history and also uh, several other natural uh, features that can be extracted from the glaciers, glacier, but when the glacier melts, this history is completely lost. God, Otto, that would be uh, such a failure on the civilization, especially to the future civilization, if we lose all that history. Um, my last question, actually, uh, would be, first, um, what should the world do to make sure that we 
continue to have glaciers everywhere. We don't have such a huge negative impact of climate change. And secondly, if we are not able to save to, at the same speed, um, is there any fund, is there any call for action to make sure that we save that history? Yes, uh, for the first thing, I think we are too late to save the, at least the Icelandic glaciers. And most glaciers will disappear within the next two centuries, uh, regardless of what we do. Great. Thank you, Odur. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, yes, it's late, but we really hope that at least we can help with saving the history. And I think that's my biggest takeaway from this interview and talking to you today. Thank you so much for taking time out today for us. Thank you very much. Thank you.